Nebraska, Penn State, the two remaining unbeaten, but Oregon is right there near the top as well. They absolutely are. They're biting at their heels. Those top three teams, I got to say, they are the best in the country. They're doing it all well. Offense, defense, very balanced teams playing. I know Nebraska swept Wisconsin uh, the other night. So sometimes the top teams are just sweeping each other, which is kind of surprising. You'd think they'd go long five setters, but clean volleyball being played. To Verdi looking to tip it off the block, unable to do so. So the Nebraska lead is out to 10. By the way, how about Leslie Gabriel's Washington Huskies going to Minnesota and taking down their former head coach, Keegan Cook, and the Golden Gophers. And that actually helps Oregon at the top of the standings. They were near the top of the standings, tied with Minnesota as well as Purdue coming into the night. Roberta Purishai. To Michelle Oapete, who's really been playing well recently for Oregon. She absolutely has. Coming off a huge night against UCLA where they won and had 15 kills, hit 438. That's a very high efficiency for an outside and makes a coach happy, that's for sure. But she really has done a nice job. She's a high flyer as well. It's the best she hit all season. She's also great behind the service line and scores, helps score a point right there after the hitting error for Oregon. Just a little bit of a misconnection, hit flat on the ball there. Oabete with seven aces in the last two matches coming in. Landfair, right side swing. Oabete lays out for the dig. Here is Collier. Power tip for the kill. Oregon showing something here late in the set. Well, Mimi Collier is the go-to. She's been the hot hand for this team. She carries a huge load offensively. Tonight, since they're in the 6-2, as we mentioned, she will be also in the passing rotation more, and she just really handles it well. Ducks are 0-3 against top 10 opponents this year. Matt Ulmer wants to see his team bring the competition and the fight in this situation. Yeah, I think that's what you want as a coach when you've got some adversity thrown at you. How will the team bounce back? How will they come together? And you know, figure it out. It's a tough one here. Again, especially when you're playing the number two team in the country. And they're so efficient offensively. And as we mentioned with that backcourt, not a lot of balls drop on the ground against the Huskers. Coach Omer said he's seen his team at times this year get a little bit fast and ahead of themselves. And with some of their lack of experience there, just needing to understand that. The original as call well as was just accepting. ball out, point Oregon. Nebraska's challenging that the ball was in. He uses the words ex accepting the challenge, not, not a challenge in, in this case, in terms of challenging <laughs> the play, but accepting the challenge of playing the number two team in the country. Coach Ulmer was eager to see how his team would do in that situation. But let's take a look at this call. Well, that looks in from my view here, from our view, from what we can see, the ball touches any part of the line, it's in. Pretty close. Very close, I'd say. Is it the ball or the shadow of the ball that's in? We have to have clear and conclusive evidence to overturn the call. and. Uh, I'm glad I'm not having to make those decisions, that's for sure. That is very close. But your first instinct was in. That was my first instinct. And it looks like they won that challenge. So points to Nebraska. And right now it's turnaround Oregon passing with two. Mimi Collier at the three meter, 10 foot line here, trying to get out of the rotation so she can focus on the attack. Riley digs it. So the libero set Murray is handled there by Morris. Gregoire, the out of system swing. Beeson, block contact. Collier into the block, and Nebraska gets the stump block. I like the effort from Oregon. They're going for it. There's just a little bit of miscommunication and the connection as expected. Going for the 6-2 is not quite as crisp as they're used to because they haven't done this. 
Lydia Malk, freshman from Bennington, Nebraska, had the serve and the dig. That's a point for Murray and the Cornhuskers. By the way, with that last block, Rebecca Alec moves into 10th place in Nebraska program history. 347 career blocks for the Lincoln native. Colby Neal has come back into the middle, and Collier kills from the outside. Good deep swing from Collier again. Lexley Rodriguez there, the libero for Nebraska. Doesn't miss a lot of those, but this ball caught her a little bit high on the dig. So point for Oregon, and they're going to need to get some of these things going here from the line and some digs and trends. And a missed serve is not going to help that part of the game, that's for sure. Speaking of milestones, earlier in the set with her first dig of the match, Lexi Rodriguez passed Caleb Banworth for solo second program history in career digs. And up next is Justine Wong Arantes. And there's, there's a chance that Rodriguez will get there by the end of the year, assuming that Nebraska makes a deep run in the tournament, which has typically been a safe assumption. Andy Jackson misses, so it's 23 to 13. Well, those names you just mentioned in the libero position are ones if you're into volleyball, everyone knows who they are. And Nebraska has really had just top liberos year after year and putting the work in. And that's a big focus. Head coach John Cook said is defense. He's a real big believer in that. You know, defense, I, it wins championships. You have all the offense, but you got to have people back there. And this backcourt for Nebraska really puts them above the rest. You see what's being challenged there. Block touch call as John Cook not shying away from using challenges despite the margin here. He already won one, and if you win a challenge, you will keep it. Looks like some finger movement there on the left hand. As you can see, what we're looking for there is just the fingers bending back, and looks like it got a piece of Oni Ofebu's left hand on this attack. I mean, you would think if you're going to challenge in this situation, you have to be certain. And it sure looks like Nebraska's going to win another challenge in this first set. After review, the ball was touched by Oregon. Nebraska retains his challenge. Point, Nebraska. Great job getting that look by our Big Ten Network crew. And Nebraska, with that challenge win, is going to move to set point. Not exactly next door to Lincoln, and there, there are a lot of fans wearing red here tonight, supporting John Cook and his team. First ever Big Ten battle between these two programs. Rodriguez the serve. Ofebu is denied, and Nebraska makes quick work of their new Big Ten foe in the first. And I wasn't sure how they'd handle the switch with Oregon. Like, how would they respond? Because Nebraska didn't know they'd be running a 6-2 from what I understand. So, you know, but they come out, they take care of business. They passed well. Their side out game was nearly 70%. Or no, excuse me, 62% point scoring 70. So, tough to beat. 70% point scoring is tough to the crowd that enjoyed it and, and did a lot to get here to enjoy it. Well, I'm pretty sure it's almost nearly impossible to get a ticket in Nebraska. So these fans, look at this one. I love this sign. Drew, 1,600 miles to be able to watch the Lady Huskers. And I believe it. I know they're sold out every game. And I know they're trying to do that here as Oregon as well, as we talked to head coach Matt Ulmer and just the effort and energy that they're putting in to build the fan base from the beginning when he got here, and it has grown every year. I know they were top in the Pac-12 when they made the switch to the Big Ten. He said, we went down to number six, but we're competing with teams like Nebraska. So we're gonna keep getting it done. First point of the second set, Amy Collier, Nebraska boxer. Here is Sophie Gregoire, the red shirt freshman, didn't play last year. She's from Dundee, Oregon. 
And a good decision there. Greg Wild's got two up, especially with Taylor Landfair on the outside for Nebraska. Merritt Beeson. Well, I'm just so impressed. Merritt Beeson is an incredible opposite hitter. That was from the left side pin. She really can do it all from wherever she is on the court. But she comes in, and you don't even know where she's going to hit this one. She's facing the center and just cuts that cross body in the seam. Great pass as well by Rodriguez on that net clipper of a serve. Riley. Gives it off to Rodriguez and to Harper Murray. Well done. And a good decision. We've seen some crushes for Murray there, but that's just the experience. And again, only a sophomore, but having that variety in your tool belt, as we call it, to be able to pull out different swings when the time is right. That was really smooth. Collier on the faster tempo set, dug by Rodriguez. Block touch here for the Ducks. Dug by Rodriguez. Block touch here for the Ducks. Oh, Febu tips. Beeson was right there. Now it's Murray off the block. Purishai laying out. Oh, Febu takes it. And Gregoire gets it over. Alec right to the middle. Morris was ready. Well played point. Murray got there, but a kill by Collier. What a long rally. Both of these teams, and as you mentioned, Mackenzie Morris named quite a few times for Oregon. Their libero, she is flying all over the court, keeping it alive. They've got to take advantage of those points in transition when they have them, and that was a nice decision by Collier to go in strong in the soft touch over the block. Big momentum point, potentially, early in the set after Oregon lost big in the first set, although Klein puts it in the net on the next one. Line, Collier, that connection's been strengthening in recent weeks. That one found Klein on the free ball. Here's Glover. Nebraska's defense just always looks ready for everything. In system here, Bergen Riley, Merritt Beeson. Oregon block, one of the best in the country. Another long point, and Murray is blocked. And you can see Murray coming down like, all right, okay, sorry, I got that one. And that one, no coverage there. That went pretty deep from the Oregon block. Doesn't normally go down, but good press over the net. We saw a few of these go down the front of Oregon. Now they're getting those hands over and pressing. Sixth year UC Irvine transfer, Oni Ofebu, who touches 11 feet. But after two long point wins in the set, Oregon has missed the serve on the very next point each time. I know they have to serve tough, though, and that Omer acknowledged they might miss more than usual against a team that passes like Nebraska, trying to push that serve receive. Glover cross court, it's out. Like the aggressive swing angle, barely missed that one on the sideline perimeter. You know, how many mother-son head coaching duos active are there, in, really, in any sport in the NCAA? His mom, Leanne, still is the head coach at D3 Carthage in Wisconsin, where Matt attended and helped out. His mom's coaching staff. He was really excited to enter the Big Ten with his Midwest roots. And that's a miss, so Nebraska extends the lead. Keep an eye now with Merritt Beeson in the back row, coming out for that back row attack. Very powerful weapon. They'll use her both middle back and right back, but Glover sides out for Oregon. Okay, I like Nebraska going for that short serve, but Oregon was ready and a nice lift by Oabete, who every time, the two times I've been here to cover a game, she comes in and does extra passing work every single time after practice is over. Really has dedicated in improving in that area, and that sets up perfectly for that big smash. Maya De Los Reyes serving sub. And 
Nebraska, the fewest aces allowed in the country, and Oregon has dished out three aces already. Well, this is what they need, and they know, look, if they want the Oregon block to get involved, to get the triple block going at times, they've got to disrupt the Nebraska offense because they have a very fast-paced rhythm, Coach said. That's the only way they're going to be able to get some touches on that. Beeson on the bit. Right back to Beeson. Two in a row. She's denied. This time a stuff block by Neal. Huge by Colby Neal. She is an excellent blocker, solid. She gets not only straight down blocks, but a lot of positive touches for this Oregon team. She has four or more blocks this year in 12 matches. Good response by Neal after Taverdi got the start today. Andy Jackson misses one. So that huge block from Neal, it might, you know, that creates that error there as well because now you've got in Andy Jackson a little bit trying to avoid the block. Point for Oregon and getting that momentum on their side. Jackson now hitting zero today. Two kills, two errors. She's been a little more error prone lately, although did break out of it against Northwestern. And then most recent run. And that is called out off the block. So a point for Nebraska despite the big surge from the crowd afterward. Wow, that was... Look at Oabete. Look how high her head is over the net. Oh, wow. That, that. That's in. Needs, yeah, I don't know if we're going to have a challenge, but we I do. think we are. And that clearly from our good camera work there, you could see already that that ball was in. Well, the look, original that's a tough ball one, though, because you think about Nebraska's it. Nebraska's point, Oregon is challenging that the ball was in. The referees don't have a great angle because they're right over the ball, and the line judge might have easily gotten screened by True. a player. Good point. AJ, look at you. You got everyone's back there. I like it. So that's why you have the replay system. You go review. After review, exactly. good. the ball and was in. Be... Point Oregon. Oregon keeps its challenge. You can see Maya de los Reyes there fired up, and I would be too, because this is three blocks in a row for Oregon to get things going. You mentioned how high Oabete got there, and Matt Olmer talks about it. He has a couple of undersized players in front. Oabete, Kristen Klein, their setter. They hold up very well as blockers. They're very disciplined, and that's how you have a team that's third in the conference in blocks. It's a 5-0 Oregon run. Murray with the answer. I liked the setup there, but she just attacked the edges of Colby Neal's left hand there on this attack. Look at her coming from the middle of the court. Strong attack. Thumb down off of Neal's left arm. What a cool matchup to see these high-level Oregon blockers against these advanced hitters that typically have a lot of answers in tight spots, including Murray with a good serve. Jackson smashed down. And that's one of the shifts in the 6-2 for Oregon is Mimi Collier is going to have to pass more. And with those tight ones, they can't have the setter going up and trying to joust and block those because they are a back row player. Yeah, big injury for Oregon. Senior DS Daly McClellan is out. And that's on the wrong side of the antenna. So Nebraska responds to that 5-0 Oregon run with three straight of their own. Well, and they're going to need, Oregon needs to get a pass right here and kind of nip this one right away because you don't want Nebraska to go on a run and steal all the momentum. Harper Murray over .3 aces per set, a really high number for John Cook and Nebraska. Signed a contract extension in May through the 2028 season. So it's his 25th year, but he's not going anywhere. I thought the fans, I saw that, and I thought they're going to throw him up like a concert and just kind of like have him doing the body, you know, like on their hands up and down the stadium. Sure, there are plenty out there that would gladly do that as Collier smashes one on the Bic. That's a big weapon for Oregon. It's something John Cook was cognizant of. It's easy, he said, to relax a tiny bit when you see the ball going from the back row, but Collier just gets it out so quickly. 
you can't let up for a second. Here's Taylor Lanfair, the former Big Ten Player of the Year at Minnesota. And yeah, the Oregon block, the middle's just not getting out quick enough on that one. Colby Neal in the front row right now. And with that fast pace out to the antenna, Lanfair, when she gets her feet there, John Cook said, head coach of Nebraska, like she is one of the best in the country. She hits at such a high point. Lanfair six for nine, Harper Murray six for 11. The outsides are off to a huge start. Wabete turns it down the line. That kill got Oregon out of zero. They were hitting zero, even kills and errors before that Michelle Oabete swing, the former Big West player of the year. Second over, and Bergen Riley very good at that. Good at a lot of different things from the setting position. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Cook said she does everything well. She serves well. She's a great defensive player, good blocker, and a great competitor. And look at that right there, taking, um, you know, power of that one and just getting the point. Lost my words on that. It was, it was just that pure. I guess so. Beeson off hands and a point for <laughs> Nebraska. Kind of saw this a little bit against Wisconsin, which a you know, special moment for Nebraska, especially their seniors going to Wisconsin, getting their first win there since 2013. First sweep by anybody in the UW Fieldhouse since 2016. As a left hand attempt by Neal. And Taylor Lanfair tries to swat it down, but a layout by Oabete. Alec Rodriguez takes it. Well done setting up Lanfair. The Oregon block has been impenetrable on this point so far. And that's too high by Lanfair. Just a little bit out of reach, kind of a floater ball. Didn't get on top of it to get top spin to land on that end line. One I was going to make, though, in, at Wisconsin, it felt like any time the Badgers got momentum, Nebraska just had the answer oh, very yeah. quickly. There was a moment in the second set where it felt like Wisconsin was going to even that match up, and fans were into it, and Nebraska took them out of it really quick. And that's kind of happened right now in the second set here. Well, they're playing clean volleyball. Nebraska, we've had some long rallies. They're scrappy, they're gritty play. But, you know, they really, that first contact and serve receive is top notch here. Isn't it crazy? You look, Nicole, and the top two teams in the country, fewest aces allowed, Nebraska and Pittsburgh. Well, and that's why they're top two. <laughs> Sometimes it's pretty simple. Kept up, and the point continues. Murray off the top there. Pure shy to Ofebu. Connection looking good with their second center in in the 6-2 offense. And now what I want to see after that great rally and getting some momentum for Oregon. Look, they're, these are long ones. They're taking some breaths over here, all of them, all these players. Who do the long rallies favor, would you say? I guess we'll see at the end of the match who's laying on the ground. <laughs> but right now, keep this ball in for Oregon. Give themselves another chance here. Nice back set by Riley, but Oregon was ready. Ofebu was ready for Beeson. Well, Ofebu has really been playing elite with her offense attack, but her block, especially getting there, closing it. Look at a little step there to her right, and then makes the adjustment to get out to close that block with Mimi Collier. Assistant Collier to do. She sure did. She went up that one almost kind of did a juke, like a double pump on her shot there. Beautiful placement right behind the block of Nebraska. Collier so far has taken 25 swings. Really early in this match. 25 swings for Collier. You're going into Wisconsin. It's a tough crowd, sold out as well there. You have to go ready and prepared and bring it from the first point. And that is a big reason here. Nebraska with 19 straight wins, 15 sweeps. I mean, they're making quick work. 
And that is our State Farm State of Success. Their only loss this year at SMU, who has managed to pick off both Nebraska and Pittsburgh. What a year for SMU. Nobody's going to want to face them in the tournament. Coming off the timeout, Harper Murray. I, I have to note, interesting timing for that timeout, given that it, con it came one point before a potential media timeout. Given that it, con it came one point before a potential media timeout at the 15 point marker. Would have been an auto timeout, but John Cook had seen enough, and it worked out. Sometimes it's the feel. You just got to take it when you feel it's right, and it paid off. It, it certainly has. They've won two points in a row after that one went long off the arm of Ofebu. <laughs> Mimi Collier hitting error. Three straight for Nebraska off the timeout. Well, Mimi Collier having nearly half the attempts for Oregon, so Nebraska can kind of favor that. If you're the Fox Sports app and Washington, as we know now, will be coming in with momentum. They will. That was a big win at Minnesota, and Washington is a good team. They're dangerous, so you've got to be ready to go. And like we said, the Big Ten, one of the top conference, ACC and Big Ten tied right now in ranked teams, but... They have been the top over the years and night after night. You never know. Even if a team's not ranked, you've got to be ready to go and come out from point number one. A John Cook timeout, then a 3 0 run. Matt Ulmer uses timeout. And Oregon sides out. And two in a row for the, the serve in from Oregon, and it doesn't mean a lollipop over, but good pace and in the court. The block is helping right now. They're getting some nice setups, some good press. Look at that, Oof. Oabete, excuse me, again, pressing over that left hand straight down. Nice serve. Morris to the floor, and Oregon keeps it going. Out of system, Murray, well done. Just touching that one down. Well, and that one again, just sliding in set one. We saw that with Oregon, the ball just sliding between their block, hands not over. Murray does an excellent job, just kind of slam dunking this one right in between all three blockers. And that's when you'll see Oregon do the, th the triple block is when it's an out of system set like that one. Murray, different type of shot, tries to Cut it cross court, too much on the angle. Well, that's why Matt Ulmer was saying he doesn't expect maybe for us to see the triple block quite as much tonight because usually Nebraska is in system. Yes, they are. They pass well and they run a very fast offense, so it's really hard. And it's also that decision of do we want to have a fourth defender on the floor or send them over? By Delos Reyes. Passed by Nauk. Good shot by Glover getting Nebraska out of system. So here's Oregon's chance. Klein, a big set for Collier. Mimi Collier is just an incredible athlete and like I said, carries a big load here for Oregon. Offensively, defensively, look at that from the back row, elevates and just blasts it right by Andy Jackson's block. Collier improving this year as the competition has gotten tougher. Numbers up in Big Ten play. Andy Jackson off the block into the net and down to the court. Nebraska back in front of the second. She didn't like getting beat on that block, so she's like, all right, set me the slide and we'll just take care of it. Do you think that there's something, is it something to do with Oregon's blocking strategy, the fact that Nebraska's outsides have both gone off, but everyone else has struggled so far? Well, the outsides are doing a nice job with the shot selection. They're coming in strong and swinging for Nebraska, but they're also making good decisions and finding the open court with the soft tips or the roll shots. So they're just getting creative. Landfair and Murray, both well over 300. All the other Nebraska hitters haven't really gotten on track so far from an efficiency standpoint. Contact was there. And so it's all square going into this Roberta Purishai serve. 
Derrishai started the season opener against Pittsburgh, then was on the bench for a long time, came in recently when Klein hurt her ankle, and now is in there in a 6-2 uh, due to the McClellan injury tonight as Jackson starting to feel it a little bit for Nebraska, a couple of slide kills. Yeah, she has done a nice job and only a sophomore as well, freshman year. Actually had the highest uh, hitting percentage ever by a freshman Husker and carrying that momentum into this season really playing very well. Roof against Neal. Alec and Lanfair were right there. Well, that was a straight down roof there by Lanfair and Lanfair on the outside pin. She's doing a nice job setting this block up. That's a solo right there for her. Pretty big block at 6-5 to have there on the outside. Again, that's a weapon for Oregon. They love going back row to Collier. Sometimes they go to her more back there than in front. Well, I think, you know, in this situation, Mimi Collier has been the go-to. She's got the hot hand offensively, and in this scenario with the 6-2, they're comfortable setting her. They know her rhythm. They do practice setting both of these setters, all the hitters, but it's just that game time time of getting that connection going and kind of working out the nerves. Got up there with one arm. Very perfect dig. Here is Lanfair. Oh, Abete just reacts. Did enough there with the dig. Tight this time. So a joust. Riley wins. Point still going. Bergen Riley. Taylor Lanfair is down. And a powerful swing, Landfair. I mean, with the blocking, with the offense right now, she is on fire and just blasts that ball right in between Oregon's block. They are having a very hard time slowing her down and Harper Murray, as you mentioned, on the pins. Those two leading the way for Nebraska. That was a huge point by the Cornhuskers to make it 22 to 20, and Matt Ulmer recognizing that and calling title. Well, these conferences have been battling out year after year of who's kind of in the lead on that one. Wow, what a huge swing by Neil. No one up. Hello. And this is what Oregon needs to do to get things going. Mimi Collier has 31 attempts already, and the next person isn't even in double digits. They've got to get Neil going. Ofebu in that middle and got to get those passes up. Collier has been the one for Oregon as usual tonight. In system, pure shy. Collier, Murray digs. Nebraska is just so tough defensively. Beeson, too tall there, looking for some hands, didn't get it, and Oregon scores twice in a row. Top ranked Ducks against Maryland. The action kicks off at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Well, Oregon football has been fun to watch this year, too, and I know it's been a, just a hot campus with the volleyball team doing so well. The football, it's an exciting time. This is that signature matchup for the volleyball team. Today, trying to give their best against number two, Nebraska. It's Nebraska and Pittsburgh at the very top of the country. Most teams, most people view those two teams as the consensus, you know, top tier. Penn State nipping at their heels a little bit. Also, right there, though, is the number three team in the country. Collier gets contact. Huge swing from Collier going for the high hands. And look, when she's in the front row and it's coming down to a couple points to clinch a set, expect her to get the ball. And Nebraska knows it. But right now they have Ofebu in the middle. She's been hot. Got to get her the ball as well when there's a pass to keep things mixed up. Bergen Riley has options here. Merritt Beeson, block touch there for 
Oregon, but not a great touch after that. So Nebraska has an opportunity. Murray slows it down. Alec reacts. Kristen Klein was there. Glover down the line. Nothing. Yes, contact. Contact call. Set point, Oregon. Kristen Klein, setter for Oregon, coming up with that dig in the right back position. Sets her team up for this set point here. Look at this. Glover going up high, gets a piece of the fingers, and it looks like we might get a challenge here from head coach John Cook of Nebraska. Because if anything, that was a micro touch if it was a touch. I actually looked at you with my papers and swiped them. I saw the, the original touch call too, was touch again, off Nebraska to point challenge. Oregon. Nebraska's challenge and it was no touch. So after the first set went 25-12, Nebraska. We're in a challenge right now. This second set has featured 10 ties and four lead changes. And definitely Oregon has smoothed things out this set. They've got the block going. Their serve has been giving some trouble. But most importantly, their serve has been in, which has been able to get the block going and some transition points. Yeah, that does look like it's over. Look for any fingers bending back. Don't really see much, but remember, the call on the court was that Glover did earn the kill off of a block touch, so you need conclusive evidence to the contrary. And whoever has this point after this challenge will have set point. Look, it's a tough job down there for Ronald Pelham, the R2, who the R2 down on the court is always in charge of making these replay calls. Devaney McClarty is up in the referee stand, the R1. Zooming in a little bit. After review, the ball is out. Nebraska will retain its challenge and point Nebraska. Wow, Nebraska is three for three tonight. Challenging calls and John Cook hands his team set point. Well, the fans here aren't going to like that one, that's for sure. And right now, it's how you bounce back for Oregon. Look, that didn't go your way, so let's get the pass. They've been getting some momentum on their side. Mimi Collier in the front, Oni Ofebu, and Noemi Glover. Three options. Now, Glover for Oregon, number three, is stacked on the left side, so she'll actually be flying across the whole court from what we've seen so far this season to attack on the right. The three-time All-American libero serves. Ofebu tips Rodriguez right there. But a chance for the Ducks once again. Glover, the sophomore, inbounds this time. I know when I was a player, if I didn't get that call, I wanted the ball again because I wanted to show the ref, hey, that one was mine. Let me get this one. And that's Glover coming in, attacking the line. Love that aggressive swing down the line. They gave it to her, and she finds it. No need to review it. Well served by Collier. Here's Merritt Beeson. Oabete. And Nebraska back on set point. Well, Oregon's giving themselves the opportunities. They're making the digs. Their block is slowing down Nebraska's offense right now, getting some positive touches. Oh, Bate the pass. Back to Glover. Murray reacts to the tip. Here is Harper Murray. Dig to attack. Harper Murray, the sensational sophomore. Well, I love that dig. Harper Murray reacts to it, comes down, does the hard work to get off the net and put herself in a good position to attack that set. Matt Ulmer said, and as it turns out, he was foreshadowing in our call, you cannot tip your way out of it against Nebraska. They tried on set point 
and failed, and Harper Murray gives Nebraska the win at Deuce in the second. Really competitive second. Marine matchup, Oregon and Nebraska. So, does that mean that they're going to play? Marine matchup, Oregon and Nebraska. So, does that mean that they're going to play? We'll see. On December 8th. <laughs> Again, I don't know. I don't know. These two teams, you know, I know right now Oregon's down, but potential to host first and second round for NCA if things keep going the way they think. Both of these teams, um, Nebraska at two and Oregon at 12 right now, but obviously that's a huge deal to make the NCAA tournament, but then to be able to host those first two rounds and have some home, home court advantage. And for what we see tonight, Oregon has a good fan base. They've been building over the years, coming out, filling the stands. So definitely a nice advantage. Well, Nebraska trying to play host all the way, of course, until the final four. Oregon, which the top four teams would do that. Oregon on the bubble of hosting the first couple of rounds that you mentioned. Overdig by Riley, Purishai, Neal, and a clear for Colby Neal. I think Rebecca Alec of Nebraska right there thought she was going to maybe throw it over, then changed her mind and just kind of went weird off the hand. But Coop, Colby Neal here with the middle attack. And again, I like that they're getting the middles going right off the bat in this first point. And just a heavy diet of Collier so far. But Neal scores twice for Oregon, that time a stuff block. Well, Neal provides a ton of stability here for this team and also in the middle blocking position, but good leader here and a great lineup there on Alec from Nebraska. Oabete, oh, strongest server on the Ducks team. Mackenzie Morris, bump set to Oabete in the back row. Rodriguez to Landfair. Purishai, Collier. Uh, I don't know, is, is it the fact that the Ducks are just wary of how good the Cornhuskers' defense is because they've been missing a lot. They've been high error tonight. Well, I think they want to come out aggressive and swing that one. Collier going for high hands. It just got a little flat on the ball. Didn't quite get on top of it as much to get those fingertips. Morgan hitting sub 100. Nebraska only 187. That is out, so it's off the block and out. A kill by Sophie Gregoire. Service miss Mackenzie Morris. And that one down the line, Harper Murray in the front row. So Oregon's going to try to attack her, make her pass and hit. Not she, an easy job to do when you're up front row passing, I mean hitting, want to try to make you work extra hard. She's been aced a couple of times so far in this match. Short serve, Rodriguez perfectly done. Nice shot by Gregoire down the line, but Rodriguez was ready. This is a great chance for Oregon here. Oh, a on the board. Wow. I love that connection and what perfect timing. And you've got three options in the front row, but that's some confidence setting back row to Oabete and wide open. Look how the ball just spins to that sideline out of reach for Rodriguez. So in this 6-2, which is being employed by Matt Ulmer tonight as a blocking strategy with one of their top passers out in McClellan. And Kristen Klein now in, their other setter. Harper Murray, a roll shot kill. We've seen a few of those from her. Well, and that's the risk there with the triple block is with Collier going over for that third blocker, you open up this perfect shot here for Murray, and she knows. I've seen her do that all year long. She has good vision on the court and finds the open spots. Murray's numbers pretty much on par with where she was last year. Jackson. Glover tips. A nice dig during that point, by the way, by Morris as well. Yes, it was. Mackenzie Morris is doing the work there. Transfer from Kansas State this past summer. 
And getting those ups for Oregon to get these big points in transition. Glover, love that. Comes in hard and a soft tip right behind the block. Morris was a back-to-back -back Scholar Athlete of the Year in the Big 12. Got her accounting degree and is now enrolled in graduate classes after graduating from Kansas State, transferring to play her final year with Oregon. Murray serves Oabete. Back one, Ofebu. Just get that in your mind right there. Beautiful pass from Oabete, and that's the hard work she's putting in the after hours with that passing repetitions has been paying off. Comes in strong and Ofebu. But look how she elevates. I mean, they have not been able to block her yet. They need to get her the ball more when she's in the front row. And they used that slick, that slower, quick timing, even on the back one. Great set by Klein. And a good response by the Nebraska center, Bergen Riley. And you've got to respect that Bergen Riley's up in the front row. She is an offensive setter. She will attack the ball like that. So you've got to pause on her before releasing out to the other hitters. All the attention this year, Nicole, on the freshman setters in the conference. Riley, she's the OG. She was the freshman That's setter right. of the year last year. That's right. And now we've got Kristen Klein out here leading the charge. Izzy Stark, another one at Penn State. Charlie Furbringer at Wisconsin. I mean, not a easy thing to do to come as a freshman is any position, but to run these elite offenses. Happy birthday, Kennedy Orr makes the save. Coming in as the service up that touch there was more slipped. And Alex scores for Nebraska. But I was told that Kennedy Orr loves her birthday. Okay. It's, I mean, some people, they're like, okay, whatever. Kennedy Orr, no, she, she loves it, and she's turning 22. It's kind of like my sister. It's a month-long celebration sometimes. <laughs> Good like save my there. sister too. Yeah, interesting. I guess we all we all have that person in our family. Well, happy birthday to Kennedy. Absolutely, 22 years old, Egan, Minnesota native. Key service sub for Nebraska. And actually, and she's scoring some points right now. I saw Lexi Rodriguez in a press conference talking about how even though. Or comes in as just a serving sub. She's really way more important to the team than that because of her leadership off the court and just the intensity she brings. Yeah, you need that from players. And doing a nice job right now at the line and some defense here. Wow. That was Choboy with the dig. And Landfair finishes. What a point by the Cornhuskers. And this is why I wanted to highlight them at the top of the show because this backcourt is unbelievable. Laney Choboy here laying out for the dig, rolling out of it, getting back up, and just creating these offensive opportunities for Nebraska. Not in serve receive, which they're very good at, but in transition, making huge plays. Out of system, Oabete. Easy for Murray. Now Landfair is roofed again. Colby Neal showing up and showing out in the third. Well, Colby Neal's blocks are just powerful statements. They are exclamation points going down. Look at her closing this block and then coming down, firing her team up, getting that momentum and just doing it right. From Poway, California, played for Coast Volleyball, a popular club program, has been up and down during her career in terms of playing time. And even tonight, after she's had a great start to the year, struggled a little bit recently, came off the bench tonight, and she's really responded tonight after Taverdi got the start. Oh, a bet to you down the line. And I did talk to the coaches about that, about the middle blocking position, which they have some depth. So it's just sometimes looking for a different look. Taverdi runs a little bit of a quicker offense with the setter, so they were trying that, see how it goes, but. Also, Colby Neal doing big things out here for the Ducks and huge blocks. And again, another nice touch here. Well, usually, Nebraska's middles tend to score when they're in there, and the Cornhuskers find a way to close that point out. Well, Bergen Riley, when they get the second chance, she is really whipping that ball out quick to an, the opposite direction on the net, and it's very fast tempo, which makes it hard for the Oregon middles to really make those adjustments and close. Harper Murray, by the way, with her fourth double-double of the season. That'll go down for an ace.
John Cook praising Bergen Riley's all around game. So really, that's what makes her great. The fact that she's really good at almost every skill, including serving. Collier, no contact. I like that aggressive swing from Neal on the slide from Oregon, but a good dig from Nebraska. Again, making those big plays on defense. Best in the biz right there. Rodriguez in the black jersey for Nebraska. That falls down after Rodriguez kind of got taken out of the play in the first place and just one of those it happens right it does but I wouldn't be surprised she probably could set it from the ground like that I was waiting for <laughs> it but just how to reach and we talked about how she passed Kayla Banworth earlier tonight on the program digs list for number two and it was a special moment for her she said it wasn't like I came in to Nebraska just with the goal of climbing the digs list or anything but it's cool because Kayla Banworth is one of the coaches that recruited Lexi Rodriguez to Nebraska when she was an assistant coach here. Good heads up play by Collier there. Off the block and slams it down. What a serve. Murray does her best handling that serve. Morris digs pretty well. They like setting Alabete back there as well, not just Collier. Well, she's having success. I like it. And all the hitters in the front row, you've got Collier in the front row, which Nebraska probably assumes the ball's going to her, which leaves this open for Oabete. Rebecca Alec a little off on the timing and a good placement behind the block in the campfire, that middle part of the court. Rodriguez the block cover, so back to Beeson. Clear touch. So a point for the Cornhuskers. Merritt Beeson tends to play her best later in the season. Last year was the Lincoln Regional MVP in the NCAA tournament. She is an, just an elite player having a solid year for the Cornhuskers. Tonight, four for four, but not normally what we see. Olivia Malk with a service ace, the freshman from Bennington. Malk and Showboy, so high quality at DS, complimenting Rodriguez. Well, and I wanted to comment on her. I mean, coming in as a freshman, you've got Rodriguez and Showboy here on the defensive side for Nebraska, and coming in as a freshman, making a spot for herself and getting time on the court. She is a very elite. She was the number two libero in the nation recruited for the college game, and just impressive. Has some experience with USA. The uh, under-19 world championship team, they actually had a comeback versus Turkey to win gold. You can see Matt Ulmer didn't want to call timeout there. Another timeout, a new program record for attendance with some help from the Nebraska fans as well. Hey, getting those seats, those rears in the seats is not easy to do. And I know that this program and Matt Ulmer has really taken charge and he mentioned that on the call. There's, the labor of love of getting the people here, and this is a wonderful program. These athletes are doing such good work, and they've been top over the years. So it's, why do, wouldn't you want to come? So if you're home, I challenge you to come to the next game. I love it. I'll, I'll double challenge. Well, he, he talked about how it's been a grassroots effort. He's, he's built it in, in a way where, look, I mean, tonight's great, of course, but he wasn't really thinking, Matt Ulmer, about like that one big night where you pack the house as much as he's been trying to increase their season ticket holders year by year, which he's done. And he said if they average 4,000 fans this year, he'll dye his beard green. So I want to see that. I also want to see that. I will second that <laughs> as well. Nebraska on a 5 nothing run, looking to send all these fans home early. Service run for Olivia Mauk. And Collier is sent away. Matt Olmer might have to use another timeout. Well, again, trying to go up. Nebraska's getting out early, setting up a double block on Collier. And you're right, AJ. 
tried to stop this momentum, but look at that block. There's nowhere to go on that. The set was inside, attacked it. The block is closed straight down. Now it's tough, though, too. For those that have been watching the entire way, you, you've heard us mention it a few times, but for those who are just tuning in, it, it really is a big loss to have Daly McClellan out at DS. You know that if you're going up against a team like Nebraska, kind of everything has to go right. And that's kind of a tough thing to overcome when you have a veteran defensive player like McClellan who really stabilizes, and now Oregon's had to shift its entire lineup with her out. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, like I said earlier, it started, it happened today. It wasn't that they've had a few days of practice with running the 6-2 and kind of working it out. And sure, they said at practice, both of these setters are setting the hitters every single day at practice. But when you get to the game, there's a different adrenaline, different energy, and getting that connection right in game time is what counts. And the Ducks also have to turn around, regardless of the result tonight, and go to Minneapolis and take on the Golden Gophers. A marquee matchup begins 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app on Saturday, as your Gophers, Nicole, will try and bounce back from their loss against the Pacific Northwest team at home tonight. You see Daly McClellan right there in the crutches. And that's going to be tough. I mean, they need to, Oregon's going to go in there and not sure what it'll look like going into that game for their lineup, but Minnesota needs to bounce back from the Washington. Washington not ranked, but a very good, good team and playing well. Well, Washington now has recent wins over both Oregon and Minnesota, two of the better teams in the league. That ball going out of tools. And that was a good out to the pin set, so able to tool the block, whereas the one before where she got blocked, that set was inside a little bit more, so nowhere to go to tool. Nebraska blew him out in the first set, one at deuce in the second set, and now has gained control of the third. Murray's second effort, Olabete was there. Bumped over by Ofebu. Berg and Riley the layup. Pure shot. Smacked down by Collier and eventually caught by Devaney McClarty. Good instincts up there in the referee stand. She had a good touch, a one arm dig there on the high ref stands. But what a nice swing here from Collier. Look at the rhythm out there, wide open, attacking that deep line, area one, where Berg and Riley set her for Nebraska. Of course, a kick, which we saw from Malk, is legal, and it was all right for McClarty to touch that because she knew there was, there was nothing Nebraska could do on that third touch in that situation. Here is Beeson. Greg Waugh gets out of the way. Collier tips, tips again. Ophebu blocked one-on-one, -on -one, Rebecca Allen. Excellent job fronting Ofebu. She's been getting up high, and Alec fronts her, meaning stays with her, gets those hands up and over quick. Beautiful press over the net. Ofebu makes up for it. She certainly does. <laughs> what a nice answer on that one, and it starts with that perfect pass able to set her a little bit higher than the normal quick you see out here from some middles because she's getting up so high, touching 11 feet, and she loves to cross that over on the left side angle. Matt Ulmer said that he thinks Ofebu and Andy Jackson are the top two most explosive middles maybe in the country. There is Jackson. And there we have evidence of it right there with back-to-back -back attacks from the two middles. Andy Jackson, actually another one of the players. I was looking at Nebraska's roster and all the athletes who've had the USA experience with the U19s, with the U21 team. And what a big deal that is to have that experience and bring that back to your school. Yeah, Jackson won gold this summer in the U21s. Norseka Championship. That's Harper Murray getting in on the action and Nebraska gets to 20. How about the way that Harper Murray, of course, well-documented 
what she went through this summer after the reaction to her press conference and the legal trouble she got into and just she just seems so at ease right now both on the court and off of it and playing great volleyball setting a great tone with her energy for the entire team and here another chance here to show going for the high hands everyone calling the touch she's and got it she has really done an excellent job tonight attacking the block bringing in the soft tips right behind the block you can see getting a high five from head coach john cook very dangerous player Collier kills it. Murray's been one of the stars in those TikTok videos with, with John Cook, which he says, I, I barely even know what TikTok is. I didn't know I had the app on my phone. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's a little awkward, but I think they like me, and that's why they're putting me in these videos. That's right. He did say that. I think he kind of likes it, too. He's getting some good dance moves. He's viral. He just doesn't, he barely knows it. He barely knows why or what it is, but he's all over TikTok. I barely know what it is, too, so, you know. <laughs> I think you should expand the, because there's all these videos of him, you know, dancing with the different dances that they choreograph for him. What about we get to next summer and we get some cowboy TikToks? There you go. He does. On the ranch. He does, yep. Looks like we need another towel here for a little wipe of the floor, or we got a little cut to deal with. So right now, Nebraska on a roll here. That gives us a chance, Nicole, to see some TikToks, which I know everyone was waiting for. Here it is, John Cook, highlight reel. See the moves. Yeah, he said the team just took his phone one day, created it, and started making all these videos, and then they got like a million watch watches on TikTok, and so now they're just doing them all the time. I think he's having fun with it, and so is the team, that's for sure. I think they fooled him on that last one a little <laughs> bit. A bait and switch. Hey, you know what? Finding a way to connect the team, too, in this new era. Yeah, I really think there's one of those, uh, by the way, the TerraFlex surface that's new this year, which all the players and coaches happy about. Matthew yeah, very Arena. nice, beautiful. They've changed the rules on NCAA hosting that you have to have the TerraFlex, and, and so, all the players love that rule change because it's turned a lot of these courts into the preferred surface. Not only a little wipe there to get things clean, but a good time to have a timeout for Oregon yeah, to regroup. It's a little They're break passing there. with two right now. Mimi Collier hiding in the back row. She can go for that attack on the big, but Oabete and Morris handling the serve here with two. Glover tips, Bergen Riley reads it. Landfair just enough over and down. She looks a little surprised by that one, but coming in looking like she was gonna swing and then just takes enough off, catches Oregon's block on the way down. Good step, takes a step to the ball that was inside, gets her feet there, and that's when the good things happen. Bente to the floor to keep Oregon in the mix, but it's still a big cushion for Nebraska. 23-16, two points away from closing this out in three. Neil reads it. She's had a good day. That was a good read. Oregon struggles. Absolutely was. Klein. Neil keeps it going. Well, Bergen Riley's gotten a few dumps on Neil when she's been in the front row, and now she's keen on her. That was an excellent stop on the block. Didn't get the first kill on that one, but created this opportunity for her team and herself to go up and crush it. Not even saying that Neil's numbers are all that great today, but she's done enough. This is a confidence-boosting day for what had been a struggling player. Landfair gives Nebraska match point. Well, Landfair has been very efficient on the outside, and this is a position, as I mentioned, 
Head coach John Cook said she and Lindsay Krause have been going back and forth, but the last seven, now eight matches, Landfair has really taken it. And it's really up to the players. Who's going to take it, grab it, and run because they have the opportunity. Already 16 sweep victories this year for Nebraska. They're looking for their 17th. Here's Oa Betta. They play on for now. Back to back National Junior College Player of the Year, the Italian junior setter, Roberta Purishai. Behind the line for the Ducks. Morgan Fans. Watching their team for the first time in the Big Ten host Nebraska. But the Cornhuskers extend their winning streak to 20 and sweep the Ducks. They came out and played some queen, clean volleyball. Oregon put a good fight up in set number two and thought they were going to get that one, but Nebraska came out, passed well. Defense, when they had the opportunities and chances, they put it away. They did an excellent job defending, well, sorry, offensively going against Oregon's block tonight. Nebraska hit 278 against one of the... Uh, Oregon's a great team and, you know. Stay. 